Well, how's dinner? Good? All right. Well, thank you so much, and good evening, everyone. I'm, uh, I'm delighted to be here and to see all of you, or at least the 10 of you I can see. That light is so bright that I can only see the first things here. I want to thank Opportunity Nation for, for hosting this important summit. Uh, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce Foundation is proud to be a part of it, and on behalf of a lot of colleagues in the room from the Chamber Foundation, from uh, Jock McKernan and Cheryl Oldham and the big team here, uh, we are just delighted to be part of this. Generations of Americans have been able to get ahead by working hard, by earning an education, by learning a new skill, by sticking with it in the face of adversity. It's been the great American bargain and it's how we've built and sustained the most resilient economy in the world. But as you all know, and what this program is about, is that for far too many of our young people, that promise seems to be slipping away. And that poses a threat not only for those individuals, for their success and for their stability, but also for our nation and for our competitiveness. So I'd like to take just a few minutes tonight and talk about the business community's perspective on this troubling trend and our role in helping to solve it. So this challenge is, is at least twofold. The first part, as, as we've discussed already, is youth unemployment. There are over six million Americans between the ages of 16 and 24 who are at risk of being shut out of the economy. They are out of school and they are out of work. And those who slip through the cracks, those who can't graduate from high school, who don't launch on a career path, risk a life of struggles. They will be more likely to face challenges like long-term joblessness, poverty, health challenges, substance abuse, even incarceration. The second part of the challenge is the growing skills gap. U.S. employers rely on a steady flow of talent to keep their businesses operating and growing. But fewer U.S. students are graduating with the skills and knowledge they need to succeed. Too many lack proficiency in math, in science, in reading, in critical thinking. And that's not to mention the soft skills like communication or office etiquette, teamwork. There are nearly five million jobs sitting vacant because businesses, employers cannot find qualified candidates. And we can't forget that in a global economy, money follows talent. If a business can't find the workers they need here, they can go to Canada, they can go to the UK, or any number of countries that are fostering a competitive workforce. We don't have to let that happen. We have the best people in the world right here. We just need to give those people a better chance to realize their potential and to put it to work in this economy. It's good for people, it's good for businesses, and it's good for our country. So how do we confront these challenges? Certainly, we have to do our job and reform the public education system in this country. We don't want a pipeline of unprepared children and adolescents continuing to feed a growing pool of unemployed young adults. The business community continues to work with teachers and administrators and lawmakers to strengthen the education system and to ensure that students are mastering basic skills encouraging them to complete high school, and making sure that when they get out, whatever they're gonna do next, whether it's a job, whether it's workforce training, a two-year program, a four-year university, they're ready to succeed. Beyond education, businesses are adopting market-based employment strategies to identify, hire, train, and develop young talent at various levels. Tomorrow, the U.S. Chamber Foundation will release a white paper entitled Making Youth Employment Work. The report covers case studies of American companies such as Caterpillar and State Farm and Wegmans and documents their successful strategies in developing young talent. What steps do employers need to take to identify and hire and retain young talent? Well, one is that employers need to view entry-level employers as a pipeline for the future. Another is to think about the value that young workers bring to the workplace. In addition to the long-term potential, young adults bring fresh ideas and new energy and innovative thinking. They can help challenge the status quo and sharpen a company's competitiveness. And as every parent knows, certainly this is true for my eight-year-old, um, technology is second nature. 
Most young workers come equipped with a technological know-how that would make most of our heads spin, proficiency they've earned simply by growing up in the internet age. And don't forget that they offer key insights into the mo some, one of the most significant consumer trends, the consumer segments, their own peers. So employers need to look at their own policies and procedures and make sure they're not inadvertently creating barriers to hiring and promoting and retaining these uh, youth. For example, one of the things that this study talks about is credentialing inflation. The idea that an employer, when they put out a job posting, they put out a job description, they say, we need a four-year degree, we need this, instead of what the job really requires. Research shows, for example, that 20% of executive assistants have a bachelor's degree, but 65% of job postings for the position say a four-year degree is required. When these kinds of barriers are identified and addressed, it can quickly expand a company's talent pool. It can also quickly make opportunities more available to the youth we're trying to target. Finally, businesses don't have to go it alone. Even companies without a robust HR department can turn to some great organizations that are ready to help. Nonprofits like Urban Alliance, Year Up, Genesis Works, IC Stars, and others are doing the legwork. They can handle the vetting, the recruiting, the, the uh, training, and they can also help people be placed in the right jobs. All the employer has to bring to the table is an open mind and an open position. And if businesses don't know where to start, the organization Grads of Life can help match them with the right nonprofit partners. So there are a lot of good ideas in this report. I hope you'll pick it up and read it and give us your feedback when it becomes available tomorrow at the summit. It's just one part of the foundation's work. We'll be taking a lot of this learning on the road to the state and local chambers in the course of the next year. So this summit is a great opportunity to rally all of you, these stakeholders, around this very real crisis of youth unemployment. But let's not overlook the big picture. We aren't going to get very far if there aren't any jobs to be filled. And the only way that we're going to create the jobs we need is with a stronger and more robust economic recovery, a better, stronger economy. So as we work together to tackle a vexing problem, Let's also urge our leaders collectively to unite under the banner of economic growth and promote the policies we have to have to get there. All of us would agree that the best safety net, the best dream enabler, is a good, rewarding job. For most people in the world, the most beautiful sentence they're ever going to hear is, you got the job. So ladies and gentlemen, our common purpose as leaders in the private, public, and nonprofit sectors must be to set people up for success, to support a strong and growing economy flush with opportunity, to ensure that our students have and build a strong foundation of skills, to foster a system that gives everyone a shot, allows them to take risks, to fail, and to try again, and to give people the dignity of work and the satisfaction of a job well done. It's the right thing to do for people it's the right thing to do for business, and it's the right thing to do for our country. It's the right way to keep the American dream alive for the generations who will follow us. Thank you.